Welcome to the Psych Central Show, where each episode presents an in-depth look at issues from the field of psychology and mental health, with host Gabe Howard and co-host Vincent M. Wales. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Psych Central Show podcast. My name is Gabe Howard, and with me, as always, is Vincent M. Wales. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And before we get started, we want to remind you of the BetterHelp.com offer. Remember, you can get one week of free, convenient, affordable, private online counseling anytime, anywhere by visiting BetterHelp.com slash Psych Central. We have a great guest with us today. Her name is Lisa Klein, and she is the director of The S Word, a very cool movie about suicide that is really changing the way that people look at, well, this a subject that, frankly, people are too silent about. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. Good to have you here, Lisa. Thanks for being on our show. I was privileged to see a screening of The S Word here in Sacramento. It was almost overwhelming. It was such a powerful, powerful film. And I thank you so much for making it. Thank you. Thank you. So how did the idea for this come up? I mean, one minute, everybody's sitting around thinking we should do something about suicide. And and I I assume that eventually somebody came up with the idea. Can you kind of walk us through that process a little bit? How did you go from nothing to this, this movie? Well, actually, it, um, it dates back to when, when I was in college, I lost both my father and my brother to suicide. And it was not an overnight epiphany that, oh, well, I should do a movie about this because, you know, I, this seems like something I can't wait to talk about and deal with. No, it took a, it took a long time and it took, um, you know, I went through all of the all of the stuff, all of the shame and the not talking about it and my mom not talking about it and all of that. And then um, a few years ago, we did this film called Of Two Minds about bipolar disorder, which is also in my family. And as I was doing it, I thought, okay, I, you know, we, we had somebody in the film who taken her own life and I thought that I had covered the subject and I was done. And I realized, no, no, there's just, it's, there's way too much silence about this nobody's talking about it. It took me a long time to talk about it. And I thought the only way to do this was I myself had to open up, you know, we started talking about it and realizing the way for me to deal with this and to really get this out there was to do it film as a documentary. So it sounds very much like like a personal labor of love. Absolutely. Absolutely. For, for those out there who, you know, people who do documentaries, it isn't like, Oh, I want to be a millionaire, so I'm going to make a documentary. <laughs> now, that's quite the thing. No, you, you have to have a lot of passion for the subject and um, take a lot of time. You know, it was about a four, four years in the making of just oh, wow, like wow. meeting people, forming the relationships, talking to them. You know, it could be because, you know, it is a subject where you can't necessarily show up at somebody's house with a camera on and in their face. Okay, so tell me about the time you attempted suicide. So it, it, right. yeah, it, it wasn't going to work like that. And well, um, yeah. Speaking of cameras and faces, quite a lot of the movie revolves around Desiree's stage and her live through this project where she takes photographs, very personal photographs of suicide attempt survivors and gets their stories and everything. Also very powerful. How did, how did you and Desiree meet up? Well, it's interesting because the way that this all started, again, coming from the, viewpoint of somebody who had lost somebody to suicide, I sort of, you know, started there. And what I realized as I was, I I found her through somebody else and on the internet as well, because I came across Live Through This as I started going through all of this. And I realized, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to be said from people who have lost people to suicide. And there is so much to be said from people who themselves have attempted and they're alive to talk about this and a lot, you know, and it's like, wow, what can I learn from these people? What can anybody learn from these people? And so when I, when I saw the website, I was really intrigued and I immediately wrote her and then she eventually wrote back and it was, you know, sort of a, a back and forth. And I happened to be going to New York and we met up there and I, she sort of trusted me. I mean, it took a little while just, you know, talking to her and telling her my story and she told me her story and we decided that we were going to do this thing. And it, it wasn't always that she, that she was going to be one of several people who I was talking to. And, I, and, and when you do this, when you sort of embark on this and you, you start 
talking to people and interviewing them, it's kind of like one thing that you always have to say is there is always a chance that you're not going to be in the, in the final film because we're going to be shooting, you know, we ended up shooting like 150 hours and there was a point when I realized that that was too long for a movie. But um, <laughs> the, uh, I, you know, I'm still not totally there, but yeah, but I, I did, I was talked into it. So, you know, Desiree was one of several people. We interviewed, I don't know, 50, 60 people. There were a lot of people. And she was one of the people who I said, you know, there's a chance. And then it evolved where she became the central person because as she was interviewing people and talking to people, it's like, wow, we're, we're talking to a lot of the same people. And it just seemed organic in a way, an overused word, that that she should sort of be central to this and that, you know, we're, we're both talking to people and, and talking about the value of them telling their stories. And, you know, she had the whole thing about, you know, look into my, look into the lens and all of that. Mm -hmm. Like we're actually looking at people because, you know, as she says in the film, we so often look away because it was not an easy topic. And we can find her work on live through this.org. Correct. Correct. I have a great respect for anybody that can capture what people are thinking through any sort of medium, whether it be, you know, painting or or filmmaking and, uh, or pictures. And I was looking at some of these pictures and I thought, you know, wow, that, that is kind of deep and, and, you know, I'm kind of cynical by nature. So, so I I think they're very cool photos and I, I, I can see why you guys work together and I definitely recommend checking it out, everyone. Absolutely. I was struck immediately. So it worked very well in the film. I have to say it was, uh, it was, so interesting uh, following her around and seeing all the different people that she was interacting with. It, it just made it feel, as you put it, very organic. I liked it a lot. Even hey, if it is an you. overused word. Even if it is an overused <laughs> word, yes. One of the things that you talked about is you shot 150 hours and there were you know, stories that didn't make the final cut. Anybody can go see the movie and obviously see the stories that, that made the cut. Are there any stories that you know just just didn't quite make it, but that have kind of stuck with you that you can share? Yeah. And also we have something called the S word stories, which um, now Tumblr has taken too, but we were putting them on our website and our Facebook page and all of that. Now they're on Tumblr where we have put together these sort of pods of, of like one minute pieces. Like let's say something that, that Thomas Joyner, who is a psychologist at um, Florida state, you, we have people who did not, there's somebody named Samantha Nadler who works in suicide prevention in Tennessee. People like that who were telling their stories that were incredible or, you know, c- coming from sort of a psychologist standpoint, like where we're talking to call them experts or w- whatever, that every time we did a screening, people we want more stories, we want more stories. We, we don't need to hear from the experts. We don't need to hear. From, so we just have a little bit of that, but we really thought there was a lot of value so we have this thing called the Esther Stories where people can see all of the stuff, not all, but a lot of the stuff that actually didn't make it into the, that didn't make it into the film. But there are so many stories. There, there, there was a young man in, um, he had moved around a lot and he was in Long Beach, I believe. He came to Long Beach and he, his story was so it was heart. It was very, very heartbreaking. I mean, just uh, the abuse and all of the stuff that had gone on and the multiple attempts and everything. And it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful story. And, and I really loved him and we screwed up. He was in a facility and we had like, it was sort of a rehab facility and we had talked to them beforehand and we were going to get clearance to, to film and all of that, which we had. But they put us in like this tiny little room with a window right onto the gardener. It was just everything about it was bad. The smoke alarm went off every 15 seconds. The room was tiny. We had nowhere to shoot. It was, it really broke my heart because it was just a beautiful, beautiful story. And he left and it was just, yeah, we we could not recapture it. So, I mean, there was, you know, that, that's an extreme example of something that didn't make it. Um, but yeah, I mean, anything that wasn't in there, it was never because like, oh, well, your story sucks. It's not dark enough oh, or it's not, not uh, funny not. enough or no, no, it just, it was the way it, it sort of, you know, we were weaving it together in the film. That would be the only reason that something didn't make it in there. If you're shooting 150 hours for a two hour movie, 
lots of people are going to get left out because the sun was in the wrong place in the sky. There is this thing in, even within the, the community, the suicide prevention community that, oh, my story just isn't good enough. It's like I didn't X, whatever my method was, wasn't as big as this method. You know, what, it isn't about that. It just isn't about that. Your story, all of the stories are so important and intriguing and everything else. If you had an int intent not be here anymore, it's pretty important and, and people need to listen. So many people in our community, honestly, we're so used to being rejected and stigmatized and discriminated against that something as, as insignificant as, you know, hey, look, you just didn't make it and that it, that's just part of life can seem so personal. Sometimes the stars just don't align, but it's, it's not because you did something wrong. All right, everyone, we're going to step away to hear from our sponsor, but we'll be right back. This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. Secure, convenient, and affordable online counseling. All counselors are licensed, accredited professionals. Anything you share is confidential. Schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus chat and text with your therapist whenever you feel it's needed. A month of online therapy often costs less than a single traditional face-to-face -face session. Go to betterhelp.com forward slash psych central and experience seven days of free therapy to see if online counseling is right for you. Betterhelp.com forward slash psych central. Welcome back, everyone. We're here speaking with Lisa Klein, director of The S Word, a very powerful film about suicide and suicide survivors. Throughout the film, quite a number of different individuals are featured. And we get to the end of the film, and we learn that one of those featured people did not make it. I realized making a film like this I'm going to get to know these people and I'm going to love these people. And what if something happens? I'm just saying that, that the, the vulnerability here was pretty intense because, you know, a lot of these people are advocating and they're doing stuff, but you know, it isn't, it isn't like, you know, I've thought about suicide now I'm not anymore and everything's great. And, you know, I'm just going on. It just becomes about coping mechanisms and tools and all that stuff. So when this happened, it was one of those things that knowing that in the work that she was doing, that this could happen. And then it did. Desiree called me and told me that Natalie had taken her life. And she was at the point, you know, she had been featured on Live Through This and she was advocating and she was doing all of this. She was doing all of this stuff. And then suddenly it happened. It turns out it was something that I, I found out after she was also one of our supporters so it just made you know the heartbreak which is already pretty big even bigger this is true too we, we were seeing the film and desiree herself even goes through a period in there where where she's not doing well that was a little bit of a of a surprise i suppose because she has been coming across up to that point as being you know really passionate about her project and everything and then all of a sudden we see oh well crap she's she's still having her bad days as well it's something that's Part hard for a lot of people to, to grasp. It, it really is. And Kalechi talks about it too. And Leah talks about it. And Craig talks about it. It, it. It's one of those things that if you had attempted suicide or thought about suicide, it's rare. I, I, it probably happens where, you know, you might wake up one day and you never have that thought again. But generally you know, it's something that is there. It's part of, it's part of who you are. And it isn't about, okay, those thoughts are gone. It's about, okay. You know, as Kalechi said, if she had thought the way she was feeling that day, if she had felt that way when she was 23, she might not be here anymore because what's happened since she was 23, she's now 32, I believe. What's happened is, is really getting those tools and those coping mechanisms. So really, that's what, that's what it's more about. It's more about how you deal with whatever is being thrown your way, which is, for most of us, things might not be going quite your way. So you can give in to that, or you can figure out a way that you're going to deal with it. And that's really what it was. So Des was going through a really hard time, a really hard time. And she's still here, and she's going to continue to go through those hard times, but she has ways of dealing with them. What I like is that this has exposed something that most mental health, you know, advocates, speakers, writers, we all go through, myself included, whereas I try to be this shining example that, hey, recovery is possible. You know, I, I, I beat my demons. I, I got out of the hospital. I'm living well. I have things that, you know, quote unquote, normal people have, you know, a wife, a house, a car, a job. But here's the thing. I, I still have uh, 
issues living with bipolar disorder. So the question becomes, do I share that? Do I tell the world, hey, I'm still doing well, but yeah, I, I haven't slept for three days or I'm experiencing depression or I thought about suicide for the first time in two years last night because I don't want to remove that hope. You know, I want everybody to know that they can get better, but it's not realistic to think, oh, hey, I'm completely better and that part of my life is over. That part of my life is never going to be over. But there is kind of a trade-off because I don't want to scare people. And I, I like the way that that was sort of handled, you know, in, in various phases, you know, both on the website, both in the different projects and, and in the movie. It's just, it's real life. And real life isn't black or white. It's not well or sick. It's, it's kind of a spectrum. It, it's hard to believe that we've reached almost the end of the show. The, the last question that I want to ask you, it, it's more of a statement. I'd like to get your thoughts on it. I really liked the diversity that was in this film. You know, so often we see things from sort of, you know, a white middle class perspective, just the patient's perspective, or just the family member's perspective, or just a medical perspective. And you really managed to get a lot of different perspectives into a film. Can you talk about that any? That was just, that really struck me. And it shows me that we need more of that in our movement. It's a really good point um, in that when we were when we were doing this, it's like, wow, do we just cover one person and one situation? Because then, you know, maybe because I, I, you know, I didn't want to go like five different directions and all of that. But it was really, really important for me personally to cover family members, because when when you're going through something, you're not going through it alone. Your your wife, husband, daughter, everybody's going through this together. So that was a really important thing. When talking about it, you know, hashtag suicide so white, for example, it, it isn't just a white issue. It isn't just that it's in every, and to, to understand, I mean, the, the importance for me in, in terms of the spectrum of it is for people to understand that suicide is one of the few things that just does not discriminate. It just doesn't. It doesn't matter. We saw Robin Williams. We see, um, you know, the, this young man who I was talking about in Long Beach, you know, it's it just it, every single spectrum, every single, every single ethnicity, everything. It was important to sort of have that. It, that did grow kind of organically as well, because these were the people who, who made it. And, you know, um, when Kalechi talked about sort of the strong black woman and all of that stuff, it was like, you know, that's really good. That's really good. And it's really important. So she help teach us that as opposed to us saying, Hey, can you talk about this? So this all came from her. This was not, uh, this was us learning as opposed to us teaching. Thank you. As I said before, this is a very powerful film, very, very important film and one that affected me deeply. I want to know how did it affect you personally to film it? Well, when I set out to do this, a lot of my friends, you know, some were like, okay, other, m many were like, don't do this. This is going to be too hard. You're going to have a really hard time because this really was dealing with suicide. And it isn't like I didn't think about my own stuff, you know, it's in every frame. So it was good days, bad days. You know, it wasn't like, oh, cathartic. Now I learned everything I set out to do. Because when you, you know, when, when I went into this, did I um, at least emotionally think, I'm going to get some answers. I'm going to find out what my brother was thinking or whatever. Emotionally, I may have, there may have been a tinge of that. Whereas, you know, intellectually it was like, of course not because everybody had, has a different feeling as they, as they are thinking about stuff like this. I did, I did learn a lot and it did help me. I mean, I, I do feel like, like Desiree says at the end of, of the film, it's not like I was looking for a community when I went to do this, but I found a community and I have to echo that because these people who are who are in the film, it it is like a second, it's like a second chance at sort of healing or something. There were moments where it was really painful, and I had some really tough days. Like I can't do that. Like why am I doing this? This is way too hard. And then there were days like I can't not do this. I have to do this. Well, I'm glad that you did complete it, Lisa. Thanks so much for being on our show. We really appreciate it. Thank yeah, you guys you were so much. Thanks for making the movie. Thanks for being on the show. Please visit the swordmovie.com to learn more. And with that, we will see everyone next week. Thank you for listening to the Psych Central Show. Please rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or wherever you found this podcast. We encourage you to share our show on social media and with friends and family. 
Previous episodes can be found at psychcentral.com slash show. Psychcentral.com is the Internet's oldest and largest independent mental health website. Psych Central is overseen by Dr. John Grohall, a mental health expert and one of the pioneering leaders in online mental health. Our host, Gabe Howard, is an award-winning writer and speaker who travels nationally. You can find more information on Gabe at GabeHoward.com. Our co-host, Vincent M. Wales, is a trained suicide prevention crisis counselor and author of several award-winning speculative fiction novels. You can learn more about Vincent at VincentMWales.com. If you have feedback about the show, please email talkback at psychcentral.com. 